Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture on functional modeling concepts. At the end of this session, students will be able to describe and summarize the functional modeling concepts. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about the introduction to functional modeling. We will be understanding the parts of the data flow diagram abbreviated as DFT. We will be seeing the features of DFT and finally concluding our lectures by understanding the advantages and disadvantages of a data flow diagram. Moving ahead, so functional modeling is represented through a hierarchy of data flow diagrams. So a DFT is a graphical representation of a system that shows the input to the system, the processing upon the inputs, the output of the system as well as the internal data stores. Now, when we start with the functional modeling, the first thing that we need to know is identify the input and the output values. Upon identifying the input and the output values, build the data flow diagrams showing transformation and functional dependencies, that is expanding the non-trivial processes Further, describe the function. Whatever the system is intended to do, we need to express and describe the functions in some language, followed by identifying the constraints between the objects, that is, add to the dynamic modeling and which are present in the object modeling. Further, as stated by Rombok, a data flow diagram is a graph which shows the flow of data values from their sources in the objects through processes that transform them into their destination on other objects. The four main parts of a data flow diagram are processes, data flow, actors, data stores. The other parts of DFT are constraints and control flow. Now let us understand the features of DFT, how each of these features are depicted graphically. Also, we will see an example for the same. Now, let's begin with processes. So processes are the computational activities that transform data values. A whole system can be visualized as a high-level process. A process may be further divided into smaller components. So how is a DFD represented? A process is represented as an ellipse with its name written inside it and contains a fixed number of input and output data values. As you can see the example over here, the process is represented graphically through an ellipse. Here, the figure shows a process compute HCF and LCM that accepts two integers as inputs and outputs and the highest common factor and the least common multiple. So this is the way how it is being depicted. Further, we continue to the next feature and its representation. Now, when we talk about the data flows, the data flow represents the flow of data between two processes. So, it could be between an actor and a process or between a data store and a process. So, data flow denotes the value of a data item at some point of computation. This value is not changed by the data flow. So, representation of the data flow is represented or is shown graphically by a directed arc or an arrow labeled with the name of data item it carries. In the figure, integer A and the integer input data flows to the process while LCM and HCF are the output data flows. So if you can see over here, this is the data flow that is going to this process and this is also the data flow which is actually depicted in the diagram. Moving ahead, the data flow may be forked in some cases. So let us see an example over here. The output value is sent to several places as shown in the following figure. So consider this sum. So it can be shown or it can be forked 
to different processes so the data flow contains an aggregate value and each of the components is sent to different places as shown in the following figure here each of the four component is labeled so you can see here this is the name and it on forking you can have that split as the first name the middle name and the last name further actors now what are these actors actors are the active objects that interact with the system by either producing data and inputting them to the system or consuming data produced by the system in other words actors serve as the sources and sinks of the data now how are these actors represented in a data flow diagram in a data flow diagram an actor is represented by a rectangle actors are connected to the inputs and the output and lie on the boundary of the data flow diagram consider the example shown here the following figure shows the actor namely customer and sales clerk in the counter sales system so this is the sales processing system two actors are involved which are represented by a rectangle that's the customer and sales clerk and these are the data flows that is the sales information and the customer details which are flowing from the customer to the process and from the process to the customer which is the actor now moving ahead to data stores now what are these data stores as you can see and we have seen in the previous uh, slide the actor is the active object whereas the data stores are the passive objects that act as a repository of data unlike actors they cannot perform any operations they are used to store the data and to retrieve the stored data they represent a data structure a disk file or a table in a database representation of a data flow diagram that is how do we represent the data store in a dft so a data store is represented by two parallel lines containing the names of data store each data store is connected to at least one process input arrows contain information to modify the contents of the data store while the output arrows contain information retrieved from the data store when a part of the information is to be retrieved the output arrow is labeled an unlabeled an arrow denotes full data retrieval a two way arrow implies both retrieval and update so now let us see an example of data store the following figure shows a data store that is labeled as sales record that stores the details of all sales input to the data store comprise of details of sales such as item billing amount date etc to find the average sale the process retrieves the sale records and computes the average now you can see over here a data store is represented by by two horizontal lines as we have seen over here or up to parallel lines containing the name of the data store and here we can see the data flow that is the sales detail which are directed towards the data store followed by an arrow that comes from the data store to the process find average sale, average sales this computes the average sales which further is directed to the next process i hope that now you have understood all the features of the data flow diagram right from the process followed by the data flow then by the actors and the data stores now let us try to understand some advantages and disadvantages of a data flow diagram the advantages of data flow diagram it depicts the boundaries of a system and hence are helpful in portraying the relationship between external objects and processes within the system whereas the data flow takes long time to create which may not be feasible for practical purpose further the advantage is that it helps users to have knowledge about the system the graphical representation serves as a blueprint for the programmers to develop a system one of the 
Next advantage is that it provides detailed information of the system. They are used as a part of the documentation. However, the disadvantage is that they do not throw any light on the frequency of computation or the reasons for computation. The method of preparation is subjective and leaves ample scope to be impre imprecise. So, now I would like you all to think and answer the question. A rectangle in a DFT represents... So pause the video for some time and answer. Identify the correct option. The following portion of the DFD is wrong as it. Okay, so these are the references and thank you for your patient listening.